chapter 3. I don't sleep any more than a couple of hours a night. When I do, I dream of Shiloh. When I don't, I'm thinking about him. Out in the rain all this afternoon. Head on his paws, watching out the door, thinking how I disappointed him. Whistling like I meant something. That fine time getting him to come with me and taking him back to Judd Travers to be kicked all over again. By five o'clock when it's growing light, I know pretty much what I have to do. I have to buy that dog from Judd Travers. I don't let my mind go any further. Don't dwell on what Judd would want for Shiloh or even whether he'd sell it. Especially don't ask myself how I'm supposed to get the money. All I know is that I can't think of only one thing. is to get that dog away from Judd. And that's what I'm going to have to do. My bed is the couch in the living room. So when Dad comes to fix his breakfast, I pull my jeans on and go out across him in that kitchen. First, he makes himself lunch to carry out to work. He drives his Jeep to the post office in Sistersville, where he cases mail for around 200 families and delivers it. Then he comes back to the fr to friendly post office, where he cases mail for 200 more, delivers that too. Route takes about 85 miles on roads. You can hardly get by in the winter. Morning, he says to me as he puts stuff in the sandwich sack and then starts on his breakfast with the wheat, che wheat checks and any fruit he can get out of the peach tree. He makes himself coffee, eats the cornbread or biscuits Ma saves for him from out of the meal that night before. Can you think of a way I could earn myself some money? I ask him with a froggy kind of voice that shows that we aren't woken up yet. Dad takes another bite of cornbread, looks at me for a moment, then goes on studying his cereal and says exactly what I figured he'd say. Collect some bottles. Take them in for the deposit. Pick up some aluminum cans, maybe, for the recycling place. I mean real money. I gotta have it faster than that. Well, how fast? I try to think. Wish I could earn it in a week, but I know I can't. I have to go out every day for the whole summer collecting cans and bottles to have enough money for much anything at all. A month, maybe, I tell him. Well, I'll last my mail route, but don't know many folks with money to spare, he says, which is what I thought. After Dad's gone off, Becky gets up before Ma and I fix her a bowl of Cheerios, put her sneakers on so that she won't stub her toes and brush her snarls from her hair. I read once in a book about how some kids earn money babysitting. Boy, if I ever got paid every nickel for every time I'd taken care of Becky and Daryl in too, I'd have a lot of dollars. I do a whole bunch of jobs that other kids other places get paid to do, but it would never occur to me to ask to pay for it. If I asked Dad, he'd say, you live in this house, boy. And when I'd say yes, he'd say, then you do your share, like the rest of us. Which is why I never asked. More Cheerios, says Becky. With all the while I'm making her breakfast, I'm thinking the best way route to take to find aluminum cans. But the time Darlene gets up wearing one of Dad's old t-shirts from her night for a nightgown, I figured out how I could double my can count. But when Ma gets up a few minutes later, she takes one look at me and guesses what I'm thinking. You got that dog on your mind, she says, lifting a big iron skillet to the stove to the top, laying some bacon in it. Thinking don't cost nothing, I tell her. She just gives me a little smile and then sets about making bacon crisp the way I like it. And we don't say any more about Judd's dog. I must walk five miles that morning, and all I find is seven cans and one bottle. When Dad comes home about four, he hasn't found anybody looking for help either. But he says, the Sears full of catalog comes this afternoon, Marty. You got nothing better to do tomorrow. You could ride my route with me and help me deliver them. I say yes to that. No, I won't get nothing more out of it than a soft drink in the at the gas station, but... I like going around in the Jeep, riding over the back roads and like Kipper, Kipper Tuck and Cowhouse Run Road. And Dad can 
take a bag with me just in case. Just in case I have cans or bottles I happen to see. That night, Dad and I sit out on the porch. Ma's in the swing behind the sh shell and lima beans for the next day. And then Becky and Dara Lynn in the grass catching lightning bugs and putting them in a jar. Dad laughs at the way Becky squeals when she gets a bug in her hand. But seeing those bugs in a jar, it reminds me of Shiloh all chained up and Judd's a prisoner. As sure as those bugs. Truth is, about everything reminds me of Shiloh. You once get a dog to look at you the way Shiloh looked at me. You don't forget it. I got 17, Daryl Ann shouts. Aren't they pretty, Ma? I almost could turn off the electricity and let them light our kitchen, Ma says. Okay, you're going to let them go, I ask. Daryl and Ann shrugs. They'll die if you keep them in the jar, I tell her. Becky comes over and crawls onto my lap. We'll let them go, Marty. She says and kisses me on the neck. A butterfly kiss, she calls it. She bats her eyelashes against my skin. It feels like a moth's wings. She laughs and I laugh. Then far off, I hear a dog. Leastwise, I think it's a dog. Might be, could be a fox, a cub, but I think it's Shiloh. Hear that? I ask Dad. Just a hound complaining, is all he says. Next morning, Dad gives me a nudge when he comes through the kitchen, and I'm up like a shot. I ride to Sistersville and I haul all those catalogs out to the Jeep while Dad cases the mail. Not everybody gets a catalog, of course, but anyone who places an order in the Sears during the year gets one, so that's a lot to load up. By a quarter to nine, we're on the route, and Dad pulls the Jeep up so close to the mailboxes I stuff the mail in it and turn the little red flag to the side if there is one. Some folks even wait down at the box. And then you feel real bad for them when you don't have anything for them. Dad knows everybody by name, though, and he always takes the time to say a little something. Morning, Bill, he says to an old man whose face lights up like Christmas when we stop. How's the wife doing? About same, says the man. But this catalog sure gonna make her cheer her up. And he sets off for his house, mail tucked under his arm. People... Even leaves something in their boxes once in a while for Dad. Mrs. Ellison always leaves a little loaf of banana bread or cinnamon roll, and Dad saves it to eat with his lunch. But after we finish Sisterville, we do friendly route. But that, as the Jeep gets up near Shiloh, my heart starts to pound. I'm thinking of closing my eyes tight in case that dog's around. If I see his eyes looking at me, they'll just drive me crazy. I can hear dogs barking when we're half a mile from Judd Travers' trailer. The dog can pick up the sound of a Jeep real quick. I get Judd's mail ready for him. He hasn't got any catalog coming, but he's got two other magazines. They'll probably warm his heart. Guns and ammo and shooting times. Hmm. Why don't he take a magazine about dogs? I'm thinking of teaching him how to be kind. All the dogs are chained up when we get to his place, so no one's waiting for us at the box. But Judd is. He's got a big old sickle. He's cutting weeds along his side of the road. Morning, Dad says as the Jeep pulls up. Judd straightens up his back. His shirt is all soaked with sweat, and he wears a brown handkerchief tied around his forehead to keep the sweat from running down into his eyes. How you doing, Ray? He says. And he comes over to the Jeep with his head out, hand out. I give him his mail, and he even stinks like sweat. I know everybody sweats, and everybody sweats stink. But it seems to me Judd's sweat stinks worse than most anyone's mean sweat. How come you aren't at work, Dad says. You think this ain't work, Judd answers, then laughs. Got me a week vacation coming, so I take the day and then, now and then. And Friday, I'm going hunting again. I take the dogs up to the ridge and see if I can get me a rabbit, a possum, or may maybe. Haven't had my possum dinner or, or for a long time, for some time. Dogs okay? Dad asks, and I know he's asking for me. Lean and mean, says Judd. Keep them half starved, and they'll, they'll hunt better. Got to keep them healthy, though, or you won't have them for long, Dad says. I know he's saying that for me, too. Ah, uh, 
Lose one, I'll buy another, Judd tells him. I can't help myself. I lean out the window where I can see his face real good. Big round face, whiskers on his cheeks, and a chin where there, he hasn't shaved his face for five days. Tight little eyes, oh, looking down and beneath his bushy brows. That dog that followed me home the other day, I say, is he okay? He's learning, Judd says. Didn't give him an ounce of supper that night. Just put him where he couldn't watch the others eat, teach him to wander off. Got him back into the shed right now. My stomach hurts for Shiloh. That dog, I say, what's his name? Judd just laughs, his teeth dark where all that tobacco juice oozes through. He hasn't got a name. Never name any of my dogs. Dog one, dog two, dog three, dog four is all. When I want them, I just whistle. When I don't, I give them a kick. Get out, scram, get. Darn it, that's my dog's names. That he laughs, making a, making the fat on his belly shake. I'm so mad I can't even see. I know I shouldn't shut my mouth, but I start go on talking. His name's Shiloh, I say. Judd looks down at me and spits sideways, studies me a good long time, and then shrugs, and the jeep moves forward again and on along, on along the river.